All righty, and today, we're going to get into today's games. All right, Friday night's games. Uh, 5 o'clock, we have the uh, Orlando Magic at home in this one here. Hosting the Memphis Grizzlies at a big W uh, a couple of days ago. Who was that game against here? Uh, yeah, the Rockets in overtime, that one-point victory. That was, a, that was a pretty sick victory there. I think uh, Mark Gasol went off in that game. Um, here they are in Orlando, actually, as a pretty serious underdog. A little bit surprised here. Um, what the hell? It looks like Mike Conley might not play in this. Let me push the preview button here. It looks like he is playing, and he said, did say that they have won uh, four of their last six games, even though they've already been eliminated from playoff competition. So I'm a little bit surprised. Uh, obviously, Orlando's fighting for playoff. Uh, the eighth spot with uh, Miami and Charlotte right now. Um, obviously, Charlotte with a big win yesterday. I'm just surprised they're going to be such a heavy favorite here at home. Uh, Conley is in the game. Um, they're going to be missing Avery Bradley and C.J. Miles. Markel Fultz still hasn't uh, made his debut for Orlando, but they have him listed as out here. Um, but yeah, Orlando is going to be favored by 9.5 points at home. ESPN is going to give them a 63% chance to win the game. All right, to 5.30 p.m., we have the Cleveland Cavaliers at home hosting uh, what could be the fifth seed, I believe, at the end of the day in the West, the Los Angeles Clippers. Um, L.A. is going to have their full roster available, and for the Cavs, just Della Vadova is going to be out. Uh, so we're pretty much going to see um, the full teams here in this game. Uh the Cavs have won back to back. It's saying though, the, against uh, who have the Cavs beaten in the past couple of weeks here, a couple of days here? Uh, yeah, they beat the Bucks and they beat the Pistons. Yeah, recently. So damn. Um, both of those teams, obviously playoff teams. The Bucks have the best record in the league, and Detroit, I think, right now is sitting in the sixth or the seventh place. I think the sixth place in the East had a great run after the All Star break. Uh, one of the best teams in the Eastern Conference, actually, after the All-Star break. And I think they had, like, a six-game winning streak at one point recently. Um, yeah, Colin Sexton has been balling out. He's scored more than 23 points in seven straight games. Um, and as a rookie, I guess that's the first time that that's happened since Tim Duncan in 1998. That's some shit, right? Random. I can't believe that nobody else did that. LeBron or any other random rookie, uh, whoever had, you know, Anthony Davis maybe and things like that, Kyrie. But, yeah, uh, big, uh, I mean, shit, a big couple of weeks there for Colin Sexton. Great job for him. Um, yeah, so there's still 10 games left in the uh, in the se or in the season here. Yeah. Um, and the Clippers only trail the Rockets by three games for third place in the West. So these are huge, uh, huge, huge weeks coming up or huge games coming up here for the Los Angeles Clippers. Uh, they're also, I think, like a half game above eighth spot or uh, tied for what would be eighth spot as well with the Jazz um, and the Spurs, I'm pretty sure. But or, or no, the Thunder, the Thunder are in eighth. Actually, I mean, it's just all. There, I mean, basically, any team who gets hot over the past uh, or next three weeks has a serious shot of being the three or the four seed. Any team that gets cold has a serious shot of being a seven or an eight seed, uh, including Houston, who's sitting at three right now. But in this one, uh, looks like let's check the injury report. Oh, yeah, I already did. Just Delavadova. Uh The Clippers are going to be favored by six on the road. ESPN is going to give them a 73% chance to win the game. I love the Clippers to win this one here. Also, 5.30 p.m. This one may be not as good of a game. We have the New York Knicks at home hosting the Denver Nuggets. Uh, a ton of people are going to be out for the Knicks. Dennis Smith Jr., Frank Nilakina, Kadeem Allen, Alonzo Trier, and Noah Vonley are all going to be out in this one. Uh, this is going to be a tough one to watch for anybody. I'm sure there will be better things to do on a Friday night in New York City than go to this game unless you love Jokic or you love Jamal Murray or something like that or you're an Isaiah Thomas fan and you want to see him come off the bench uh, and rack up 30 against your boys. But 
Um, well, they're going to be playing here, Golden State, uh, just a half game above Denver right now for the first seed in the West. If uh, Denver can get a win here, that'll obviously put them in an even race there with Golden State. Um, they're up by four and a half on Portland and four on um, the Houston Rockets, so they're pretty secure there with 10, 10 or so games to play here. How many do they have? Uh, they have 12 games to play. Uh, but, you know, per- pretty obvious they're either going to be the number one or the number two seed coming into the playoffs here in the Western Conference. Um, not much else to say about this game. Honestly, Denver's going to be favored by 11 points, uh, and ESPN is going to give them a 77% chance to win. So really not that much higher than the Clippers' chance. And then the Clippers, you're only uh, dealing with six points there, whereas you're dealing with an 11-point spread for the Nuggets. It just seems, though, for the Nuggets that the Knicks have no chance with all those guys out. Um, and they're a, they're, a, they're a much worse team than the Cavaliers, especially right now. Uh, with the way that Colin Sexton is playing. So, I mean, it'd be pretty tough to put money on the Knicks. All right, this will be a damn good game at 5.30, also on NBA TV. NBA TV has a 5.30 game and a 6 o'clock game also. Both of them good games. Uh, But it's super weird. I'm not sure what they're going to be doing, going back and forth, or how they're going to be broadcasting this game. But either way, it's going to be how it is. The first one, we have the Toronto Raptors at home facing the Oklahoma City Thunder. Looks like Kyle Lowry is going to be out of the game, but uh, everybody is going to be available for Oklahoma City. Let me look at this really quick. Um, Yeah, so both of these teams actually played on Wednesday night in Oklahoma City, and uh, Toronto blew a 19-point lead, but ended up winning in overtime. Russell Westbrook with 42 in that game. This one, Kyle Lowry, has been ruled out of the game, so that matchup is going to be off the table. Uh, But other than that, it's pretty straightforward. Um, Paul George and Russell Westbrook both had pretty poor shooting games on uh, Wednesday at home. It's going to have to be different in this game here. Pascal Siakam, I think, had 33 points and like 13 rebounds um, and playing a catalyst role. And honestly, he might be a better point guard than Kyle Lowry. I mean, at this point, Kyle Lowry, a little bit slower. Um, short, not a, not a big guy, and, and has a history of not playing very well in the playoffs. You can play Pascal Siakam at point guard, which is crazy. Nobody saw this coming, but he's been uh, really good, almost almost like a mini version of the Greek freak uh, with his just attack in the rim and distribution abilities and his improved jump shot as well. Um, this is going to be a pretty sweet game, though. Toronto only favored by two and a half points. I'm pretty confused about that one. I guess that the Kyle Lowry uh, situation has drawn betters to the Oklahoma City side. I'm not entirely sure uh, how that works, but I think Toronto has a should be a big favorite. Well, not big, but five points or something like that. Uh, and ESPN kind of agrees here. 68% chance to win the game. For Toronto, I like it as well. Kawhi is going to be there. Uh, they got the whole crew, minus Lowry, um, and Paul George and Russell Westbrook just have not been shooting well lately. The last, let's say, two weeks, Paul George probably closer to like a month or so uh, has not been playing nearly as well as he did when he was an MVP front runner. Uh, let's say like the first half of the season. All righty, to the six o'clock NBA TV game. Another great. Match up here between Texas rivals in Houston. We have the Rockets hosting the hot, although they did lose their last game, San Antonio Spurs. Uh, Fareed looks like he's going to be day-to-day. Houston coming off of that loss, their most recent game, to uh, the Memphis Grizzlies where they had the one-point overtime loss. James Harden scored 57 in that game. Um but they're going to need this win here. They're only three games above San Antonio right now. Houston's in the third position. I think San Antonio is in uh, sixth. But but like I said, just three games behind the Rockets. If they get this win, just two games behind the Rockets for third. Um, this is a huge game for both teams. Let's take a look here. I'm trying to do some reading while I'm uh, talking at the same time. Oh yeah, in that in that game, uh, 
against the Grizzlies. James Harden scored 28 points in the fourth quarter and overtime alone. Uh, 57 on the night, obviously, so 29 in the first three quarters and then 29 or 28 in the fourth quarter and overtime combined. Uh, other than that, pretty straightforward here. Um, Spurs have been hot. Rockets have been hot. Probably the two best teams over the last 12 games in the NBA, respectively. Uh, Houston's going to be favored by 6.5 at home. Seems probably about right. And ESPN gives them a 67% chance to win the game. So virtually the same uh, same chances for the Rockets to win the game as for the Raptors. And see, that's about what I see as well. And look at look at the spread. Toronto is just a 2.5 point favorite, whereas Houston is a 6.5 point favorite. And they have virtually identical um, BPI projections from ESPN. I would look into that if I was better as well, and I am. All right, and to the last game of the night, we've got the number one team in the NBA, the Milwaukee Bucks, at home hosting the, what would be the number eight seed right now in the Eastern Conference. This would actually be your first round matchup, uh, the one versus eight here, Milwaukee versus the Miami Heat. Uh, Giannis didn't play the other day. Ooh, he might not play right now. I gotta click. I gotta click something here. I guess. Oh yeah, this is a matchup of last week's game too, <clears throat> where the Bucks had uh, the I guess what they're calling like the greatest comeback in NBA history. They were the first team in NBA history to win by at least fifteen in a game where they had trailed by twenty or more at halftime. So they were down by twenty points at halftime, ended up winning the game by fifteen. Uh, so a thirty-five point differential in the in the second half. First team in history to ever do that. And I'm pretty sure that was the game where Giannis actually twisted his ankle a little bit. Um, Let's see if he's going to be able to play today here. Okay, so it doesn't really really say he is listed as day-to-day. So, I mean, he may, it didn't really say that he is or isn't going to play in this one. Um... Justice Winslow is out for Miami. Rodney Magruder, who was out on Wednesday, is day-to-day, so I'm not sure about him. And Bam Adebayo, who they're really going to need in this, uh, also listed as day-to-day. None of those for sure yet. Um, Milwaukee is definitely going to be without DiVincenzo. I think that's how you say his name. Something like such. And Sterling Brown. And then day-to-day, George Hill, Pau Gasol, and Giannis on this. I would think because of the, the spread that they're expecting them to play, but maybe not. Milwaukee favored by nine points. ESPN's given them an 83% chance to win the game. So I'm guessing they think Giannis is going to play. All righty, that takes us to the end of the show for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I had a good time doing it. Um, I might come back here in like a couple of minutes and do a first day recap of the NCAA tournament. I'm actually watching it right now. Uh, on TV, I'm watching the first game of the day here. Cincinnati and... Uh, Shit. Uh, Cincinnati and Iowa, excuse me. Uh, Cincy up by five at halftime, 36-31. There's also another game going on about halfway in the first quarter. Oklahoma is up the 9-8 matchup, uh, 32-18 to on Ole Miss. So you might hear me coming back here in just a second with another show. Uh, as far as this one, this one's done. I hope everybody enjoyed it. I love you guys. Mm-hmm.